This is Speaking with the Enemy on the Thai Cats Audio Network. Here is Louis Butko. Yes, the show is Speaking with the Enemy. The Enemy, you already know, the Toronto Argonauts Friday night at Tim Hortons Field. And uh, I always like to change the name of this show when it's uh, my next guest. It's uh, Speaking with my friend. Uh, speaking with my guy, Natea J, is a color analyst on uh, the Argos broadcast. And uh, Natea, I'm going to be honest. I asked, uh, I, I asked our, our, our mutual friend, Courtney Steven, uh, what advice he had for me if you tried to talk smack uh, after the win. And he said, man, uh, you just got to let him talk your smack. So uh, the Argos won on Saturday. Uh, so go ahead, man. Uh, what do you want to say about that game? <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll start out by this. At, after a quarter, I was getting ready to hear some smack talk from you. After a half, I was like, mm, okay, maybe I'll still hear some smack talk, but maybe it might not be as bad. But after the fourth quarter, I was like, I'm ready. All you Tiger Cat fans, you got to hear from us. I mean, no, nah, it's all respect uh, on the real. It's it, it's it's a great rivalry. And, you know, I was talking about this on the broadcast. Like, see, winning in the CFL feels really good. But when you can beat the Tiger Cats, it, it just it makes your week feel even better. And in growing up in Toronto, and I know, Lou, you probably feel the same way. Growing up in Toronto, for whatever reason, you just grow up not liking Hamilton. And I don't know what it is. And it's just not even just sports. It's just life in general. And it's the same way. And when you can play, you know, I remember high school playing Hamilton teams. And we want to beat them even more because it was just ingrained in us. So when it comes to the CFL, beat Hamilton, it doesn't get any better. Uh, I got some I got some more smack talk for you, but I'll save it <laughs> when I see you in person Friday night. I love it. Um, that being said, the game is a game of adjustments. Clearly, it was the Argonauts who made the better adjustments at the half. Uh, that being said, these teams have just seen each other. They just played each other for 60 minutes. There's going to be adjustments on both ends. If you were in the Argos coaches room this week, what kind of adjustments do you think they would be making even after a win? Yeah, you know, we talked to the Argos past game coordinator yesterday, Pete Costanza, and just to, he talked about the difficulty of playing the same team back to back because, you know, one thing that happens, especially in practices and training camp, when you see the same opponent over and over again, you get it, you get to clue in on their tendencies and, you know, things that they like to do and how they run certain routes. And it makes it easier on the defensive side. And I thought last week, you know, the Tarakat defense actually played pretty well. And they were getting pressure on McLeod, but Thompson, he wasn't completing a lot of passes. And it wasn't until that, in that third quarter, that deep pass uh, over the middle to Cam uh, Phillips, that really got got the, the offense rolling. But you know, I thought the Hamilton Tech guys did a great job. For the Toronto Argonauts, I would say, you know, they try to establish the run early uh, against the Hamilton Tech guys. And obviously Hamilton has one of the best front fours in the entire league. It didn't work out really well. I would switch it up. I would try to use the pass to, to set up Andrew Harris. And if I want to use Andrew Harris, I would use him more in the passing game. I'd use him more in the screen game. I'd use him more, not just run the ball over the middle, uh, uh, over the middle because that's Hamilton's strength. So uh, I would I would just switch that up and, and, and see what happens and try to jumpstart this offense a little bit more. Um, I would also try to get Speedy B a little bit more involved, just knowing you know, he's going back home. The juices mm-hmm. are going to be flowing. He's going to have that extra step. Maybe he'll have that 2019 MLP season step, right, and wanted to prove that uh, Hamilton wrong and, and letting him go. I would try to, you know, design some plays where he's singled up and he gets to go deep or maybe some jet sweeps or something where he can touch the ball because you'll know he'll be amped up and ready to make something happen. So that's that's a, a few of the adjustments I would make, but it's really tough. You probably just have to, whatever your game plan was and, and, and the plays that you weren't able to get to, you just keep those in, see what Hamilton was doing. They're probably not going to change very much, but you have to tell the guys, you just have to, it's all about execution. Each guy, all 12 players doing your job, winning your one on one matchups, each play, and you're going to be set up for success. Can you put that into perspective, playing a team back-to-back? Because Coach O mentioned it this week, too, where he had said, like, you know, when when you're playing somebody back-to-back, you hold something back. And I think that's a general idea, that you you, you don't show them everything all at once. How much do you hold back? In a team meeting perspective, like, how much is discussed in terms of, like, this is what we're doing this week. We'll probably get to this this week. Like, just put us into the, 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 like, the training room, like the team meeting room, when it comes to holding information or holding plays back, what does that even mean? Yeah. So, you know, you, especially in this case, you're playing a team 
you know, for the next five. So if your best game, you, you want to give them a good game plan, but it's not like it's a playoff game where you're emptying the tank, mm-hmm. right? Every, you know, every trick you've got, you've got it in the plan, every adjustment off, you know, certain plays that Hamilton may have seen in the past, you've got to answer for that. No, it's, it's just, you're going to run plays that you feel are going to be successful. Obviously some of the good, uh, some of your best plays that you think are going to be successful, but when you're, once you're getting to that playoff time or you're seeing them for the last time, that's when you really empty the cupboard, right? Literally everything you can throw at them, your best plan, your best adjustment to uh, the plays that you've already ran. You've got to go into the mind of Hamilton. It's like, okay, how many times have they, have they seen this formation and what plays we ran out of this formation? And then what are they expecting? How are we going to counter that and do the opposite of what they're expecting? So that's what, that's what you save for the end. And right now, you're not at that point yet. Right now, game number two, you're just you're just reacting off the last game. And on both sides, it's that chess match, right? Hamilton's going to go in the film room and be like, okay, this is what we saw. This is what we saw them do. This is what they might do off of that. And Toronto's going to do, do the same thing. He's like, okay, this is the defense they played or this is the offense they played. And, and you know, next week, this is what we, they've shown in the past to do. And this is how we're going to play that. Or this is how we're going to play it. Uh, if we see this kind of formation. So it's a huge chess match. It goes on through the entire game and even at halftime. And then halftime, they may go in there and, and scrap the whole plan. It's like they showed us this last week. They've, they've completely switched their plan. Now we've got to adjust. So it's just a chess match uh, through and through. And that's that's why we love the game of football. And then even at the end of the game, the coaches, I remember, always used to say, I don't care what play we call, right? It's up to you guys to execute. If you guys execute, the play 12 on 12 so all 12 guys do their job to their best of the ability that play will still work if they know it's coming right because there should be answers across the board so at the end of the day it comes down to execution but uh you guys set up for success with, with a good game plan and good adjustments coaches coach players play i heard that a lot this week i've also to that point i mean we, we've heard that a lot in you know, Every play is designed to be a touchdown, right? Every single play that is called is designed to be a touchdown. It's on the players uh, to execute that. Uh, Discipline, I thought, was other than, you know, Brandon Calver uh, getting the two misconducts, being ejected. uh, You know, it wouldn't be a Ticats Argos game without an ejection. Uh, But other than that, I think both teams did a good job on uh, staying out of trouble, staying away from the extracurriculars. Was that an added emphasis Last week was it, is it an added emphasis still going into this week uh, f- for uh, for Dinwiddie because these games do get chippy especially you know coming back to Hamilton on the second of a back to back. No, absolutely, and I think this has been an emphasis uh, all season for Toronto because it was an epidemic uh, with, with with Toronto early in the season and and just pretty much losing games because you know untimely fifteen yard. Uh, misconduct penalties and it was it was really unfortunate because you know it, a lot of good football was being played but it was getting overshadowed by you know the, the penalties and it, it started to be a black mark on the season so so coach Dinwiddie uh, obviously made it a point of emphasis like in that room and was like uh, you know literally gave guys you know, ultimatums like if, if this doesn't get fixed in the room with the guys in here policing itself I'm happy to change, take charge uh, once again and you guys don't want that so uh, definitely it, it was a point of emphasis and it, it started to get better um, you know, uh, throughout the last three games. And then, you know, to Hamilton, they had to be re-emphasized. You know, obviously, you know how this rivalry gets. It, it wouldn't be a Hamilton-Toronto game without some fireworks, without some penalties. And it, it was it was just, you know, the point was made to the guys. Like, this is not the game, you know, to get a missed conduct. This game is literally for first place. These two teams are going to be in the race for first place. And you don't want to blow a game getting a 15 yard misconduct. Right. And it was reemphasized. I'm happy the guys listened and it, it was a well-played game on both sides. You know, I talked about penalties. It was only that one misconduct where Brandon Calvert getting kicked out and it had me a second one, but you know, on both sides, I think the, you know, Dan Whitty and uh, Stan Howard did a great job talking to the guys because, you know, it, it, you want to see the game getting decided by actual football, not penalties. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think both teams did a great job and, uh, we'll see if they can keep it up because uh, 120 minutes in less than a week going head to head, especially those battles in the trenches, always fun to watch. Want to get your thoughts on McLeod Bethel Thompson because very quietly, maybe not so quietly in Toronto, but it seems like he's putting together the best season we've seen him 
uh, so far. And maybe you can attribute to that, to him being the guy from the very beginning, uh, just trust with uh, what Dinwiddie has been doing on the offense. But what do you, uh, what do you make of uh, McLeod Bethel Thompson? Uh, again, Ticat's defense was great holding him at 230 yards, but uh, am, am I wrong in saying that he's probably looked the best he's, he has in the CFL this season? Yeah, no, it, you're not wrong. He's been the most consistent uh, a quarterback, you know, this year. And it, it makes sense, all right? He's been the guy, you know, since you know, probably a little bit before midway last season, going into the training camp. He knew this was his team. Uh, he's very familiar. Second year with, you know, receivers like uh, DeVaris Daniels, Curly Gittins. And now that that comfort level is there where it's that unspoken communication. So all that stuff leads to you uh, obviously being better and being more consistent, for sure. And I think Coach Dinwiddie has a better feel for, you know, the style of quarterback he is, right? It takes a year to really understand what a guy likes to do, what he what he can do, what he can excel at, when the things you can you can give him. And last year was just, you know, a, a testing ground because uh, McLeod took over from uh, Arbuckle um, mm -hmm. a, a during the season. So now you can really go in the offseason and put in a, a playbook designed around uh, McLeod's strengths and his weaknesses and, and think the plays that he likes and plays that he doesn't like players that he likes in certain situations, how he sees the field, you understand that way better as a coach. So, you know, all of that stuff breeds uh, more success in the second, um, in that second season. And, and we're seeing that now. And, you know, they've been really happy with this play. I know that Ottawa game, uh, you, you saw where he missed a, a lot of throws that, you know, he felt he, he should have made. And he still ended up with, I believe, 340 yards passing, right? Uh, and that that's just the kind of uh, talent that he has. And, when he puts it together, when his offense can put together a full 60, I know probably every offense in the CFL is saying the same thing. If we put together, you know, a, a good, you know, focused effort for 60 minutes, no one could beat us. Every single offense says that. But I truly believe that for the Toronto Argonauts, because you look at McLeod, what's stopping this offense is the red zone. They're really good between the 20s, but the red zone efficiency is, is really low this year. And uh, it just, once that gets figured out, that's the next level. But, you know, he, he is having his best season uh, to date. And it makes sense because, you know, it's just more familiarity with them. And I know once, you know, the Argos have a lot of injuries on the old line. Once that gets sorted as well, it's going to lead to more success for him. Uh, Nate, the Toronto Argonauts will win this game on Friday if what? Finish that sentence for me. Ooh, I, I always think about turnovers and losing turnover battles. That's always a good one. But I want to, I, I want to veer off that. I want to say, if they play a full sixty minutes, <laughs> right? If they play a full sixty minutes, I know last week they played thirty minutes, still won. No, this is Hamilton coming home, all right? They have the home crowd behind them. You know, have that you know revenge game mentality. It's going to take a full sixty minutes uh, to beat this Hamilton team because they're tough. I know Braylon Addison is out. I know Dane is hurting, uh, but you know you guys have good depth, good quality. Uh, backups for a reason, and uh, I believe it's going to take a full 60 minutes to, to win this game. Nate, appreciate you doing this as always. Thank you. Anytime, Louis. Great talking to you, man. Absolutely, you too. He is Nate J. The show is speaking with the enemy. And by the way, it's time to get together. And with ragtag.ca, you can book your group vacation now and pay later. Interest free, plus get a chance to win back up to $25,000 in cash back. There's ragtag.ca slash group offers for full details. I'm Louis Butko, Ticats, Argos, Friday night right here on the Ticats Audio Network.